What is up, y'all? Kevin Kuhn here from Athlete Factors. This is the Athlete Factors podcast. And I am here with one of the guys I've known probably the longest in the industry, my buddy Lavelle Thomas. How's it going, Lavelle? Hello. What's new, man? How's it hanging? Not a lot. Um, just, I mean, just trying to stay alive and relevant. You got to try to stay. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> try to stay relevant, man. You got to sell yourself all the time. That's true. That's true. If you're not promoting yourself, nobody else will. So, um, shoot. So I've known you since what, 2009, somewhere in there. Yep. You started at Gold started Gym. Gold Gym in Waco yep. when I was there in grad school. So, um, let's dive right in. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, a little bit of your background, where you grew up, and. Um, All that, whatever, whatever you feel like sharing. Okay, so, so I'm originally from Texas. I was born in um, Lubbock, Texas. Lived there till I was 11. Moved to Austin with my mom um, until middle school. Then moved to Kansas or to Kansas from Austin and stayed there until uh, freshman year of college. Then I transferred to or I played football. Uh, play football at Butler uh, County Community College and then went back to Washburn University in Topeka, Kansas, and then transferred to Baylor then. Cool. So uh, transferred to Baylor technically in my junior year and had to really start over on my credits wise because my major changed. It was forensic science. I know that's, I mean, both my schools were in that. Even Baylor was... Uh, Uh, steering to people that were in that field, and then they took that. Maybe you don't remember, but uh, anyways, then I went to I was working at Gold's Gym and decided that you know I did like that enough to change my major over mm-hmm. to that exercise physiology and uh, human health performance because that's not where I was at, that's not yeah. the area I was in at first. So, yeah, so that's quite the switch, man. I mean, people make a lot of changes you know, in their majors, but that's, it's, it's usually like relatively, you know, related. I was not related at all, man. Oh, not at all. Because, um, at first I wanted to be a doctor and I'm like, eh, mm. when I got to Baylor, I was like, mm, I don't think I'm smart enough to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not smart enough to be a doctor. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, then, um, <laughs> And I was a forensic science major. You know, we were doing all those um, um, classes on um, uh, gun evidence. You know, we had pigs. We were had dead animals. We had flies. A lot of everything. <laughs> Blood matter evidence classes, all of that. But anyways, um, you're trying to start up CSI Waco or something. Exactly. And then they told me that it wasn't like CSI. They're like, we don't have any of that equipment that they have on TV that makes it look like that. Shoot. So, but anyways, they took that major away from Baylor. It got, they took the program away. So then I had to change my major and I was working at Gold's and I was like, I really, really like this. Like, you know, like, and, and I was just certified. I wasn't even, you know, as educated as I am now, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, when I started trading. That got that piqued your interest. Yes. Well, studying so, uh, studying exercise science or exercise physiology, like there's not too many schools that I think do it really well. And I think Baylor does it pretty well. <laughs> yeah, that's because Dr. Willoughby yeah. was that like was the one that made that program because he researches everything. If there's any supplement out there that he think is not legit, he is going to uh, put it to the test and put them on black. <laughs> <laughs> He'll find out, dude. I had him on. Uh, I had on him on this podcast. Ooh, maybe two, three months ago. It was awesome. It was. Oh, it was really good. I missed it. I need to. I need to yeah, check yeah. that one out. Yeah, it's really good. It's one of one of the most viewed because it's. 
Because it's him. Everybody wants that him. knowledge. They want that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, and he brought it for sure. So um, so tell us a little bit about your experience at Baylor. What did you like the most about studying from Dr. Willoughby? Uh, well, I really actually didn't get to take Willoughby. I didn't get to his class. Um, but when I was there, it I was it was really difficult for me. Like it was pretty intense. Mm -hmm. The like the you know the research classes and yep. all those. Uh, I mean the labs. Like mm -hmm. they're they were very you know you know detailed. You got to know your stuff <laughs> to get to those uh through those courses. So I struggled. I ain't gonna lie. I was struggling. But then yeah. again, you know. I wasn't completely focused either. That's, mm. I mean, that's that's a big part of it. But um, yeah, uh, that's far as I might as well say that part. <laughs> yeah. Come out anyways. Hey, when I was teaching undergrad students anatomy lab, I made sure that it was not easy. I was like, no, you guys are going to learn this. See, so. that's exactly what. We had somebody like you. <laughs> like, and I was thinking to myself, man, Baylor is ridiculous, man. They try, they'll make a volleyball class, like, a class that's too hard, man. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> like you're trying to make something difficult. I understand why, because they wanted it to be like a, uh, what are those schools called? Uh, they wanted it like by Ivy 2020, Ivy League by 2020. Yeah. Yeah, for no reason. All bowling class was ridiculous. <laughs> you can't pass bowling. You can't pass bowling. Dude. We, <laughs> no, it's we, true. Yeah, we had the we had to like present our curriculum for all the activities classes. So I had to I had to like show them what I was gonna teach in my aerobic running class. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> so remedial. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you want me to have, like, you? what do you want me to show you? Like, we're just gonna run. Like, and they're like, no, man, you gotta give tests. You gotta, like, there's gotta be assignments and stuff here. Like, you can't, this is not just participation. Like, there's some, and I was like, oh, man, all right, okay, cool. Every single elective. It doesn't matter which one. You're gonna have to do all that. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad I didn't do my undergrad at Baylor. <laughs> I know. You just swoop in and go to the, the, the good part. Yep. Yep. Although my undergrad it wasn't it wasn't too dissimilar to all that, but but yeah. Shoot, man. So here here's where things get get a little rough, right? So your personal life experience is extremely unique. And so let's get into that a little bit. So tell us, tell us as you got close to graduation or as you got close to graduating, uh -huh. what, what things changed? Uh, well, the number one thing that changed was that my financial aid had exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah. So it was running along next to me and it stopped. So yeah. I didn't have any more financial aid and, and I wasn't playing football. I was supposed to go there on a scholarship and mm -hmm. that all got messed up. Coaching staff changed all that too. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I had to pay my own way when I got there and I wasn't expecting to have to do that. Mm -hmm. So, and the financial aid was only giving you, I mean, of 20, 4,000, 25,000 a year that we were paying, the financial aid was giving up like 10 or $11,000 and the rest I had to try to come up with it. And mm. it was horrible because they had no mercy in that financial aid office <laughs> at all. So yeah. it was kind of rough and I was uh, passionate about school. So I didn't want to quit and I was prideful. So all my friends were already graduating from college and, and, I didn't have the money to to finish, uh, or 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 to keep going. So I was like trying to get uh, private loans or anything. I didn't get an um, approved for any private loans or anything like that. So I started selling weed, <laughs> uh, marijuana. Yeah. I thought, hey, you know, 
If I did get in trouble, I might just get a slap on the wrist. Um, I think it might not be. I mean, if I did get in trouble, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I figured that I'll just save up a little money because I only only had uh, fourteen or or to eighteen hours left to graduate. Yeah, that's like a semester. Uh, no, and, and most and most of those were internship, right? And uh, and I couldn't get back at all and i owed baylor like eleven thousand dollars so they weren't they wouldn't let me even start Mm -hmm. until they was paid in full so um i really felt like i was backed up against the wall but now i know different um like but i I made that choice and end up getting in trouble and I i was working at uh wasn't making any money at golds definitely not enough to help pay for for baylor yeah and uh uh got in trouble end up going to prison they gave me 72 months i got six years of federal prison for it wow and uh yeah baylor everybody in baylor everybody jumped ship (laughs) i mean like you know that's the i mean that's the way it's supposed to happen like you know like i was a a thug on campus or that it was like the bad seed or whatever. And I was really just wanting that degree bad, you know? Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy because you're, you were literally the nicest guy at Gold's. Like you were the first trainer <laughs> when I showed up to like introduce yourself. And, you know, like we, we were like quick friends as soon as I started working at Gold's and, um Stacey. so yeah yeah and stacy like y'all were so cool there were some other trainers there who were kind of like i don't know like <laughs> I, I think it's because in in our industry so much like we're not a team we work together but we are all competing exactly for the same clients so but like yeah, I don't think you you viewed it that way necessarily where it's like, all right, I I can't be friends with any of these people cuz this is about, you know, this is about my income. Like I, I was always trying to help. Like yeah. it didn't matter. It don't matter. Yeah. And like I wouldn't try to steal your clients. You had hope. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. Hope was Hope was a good client, really. She was. She was a good client. She was consistent. That's for sure. And what was crazy, nobody wanted her when I left. So nobody. She, nobody was needy. she was she was very needy. That's the truth. <laughs> Why you got me writing all these workouts if you ain't gonna follow them? Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, Man. dude, when when I left, I didn't trust anybody else at Golds with my clients. I think you got all my clients. Oh man, that was good. Yeah. They all left. <laughs> they, they tried to follow you anyway. On the cool, they tried to follow you. They left. <laughs> I moved to Indiana. How could they follow me? Oh, oh A- Ashlyn. <laughs> Ashlyn. Do, do you remember that one? <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that physical therapist that I trained that, uh, that you took over. I forgot her name. Jessica or I forgot, but I don't know. Anyway, I had a few. I didn't have too many clients because I was only working part time, but the few that that stuck around. You had like, the good clients though. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, hey, you don't need to train with anybody else here except Lovell. So yeah, I appreciate it. For sure. But like all that to say, like Like, you weren't, you weren't, like, this one person out in public and then, like, a different person. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, it makes me sad. You know, like, like you said, you made a mistake. You got caught. But it wasn't like people should have, you know, shunned you and just, like, you know, kick you to the curb. So, that part... That part of the story bothers me. Like I uh, bamboozled them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, like I tricked them in thinking into thinking I was this good guy, 
and I really was this thug that was selling weed. But I was really just like trying to get that over with so I could, you know, be this guy with, with this degree, you know, mm-hmm. and and improve. But it's really just, I mean, it, it turns into pride, really. I mean, if I if I didn't have it, I didn't have it. God would have made a way for it to happen. You know what I mean? If if that's where my mind was at then. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to I wanted to force it to happen. Like I could I can I can get it by myself, you know. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those things like uh what's the quote? Uh God helps those who help themselves. Maybe <laughs> I don't know if that was the situation or not, but it's tough being in being in that position. Like I can't uh you know, I don't know what I would have done had I been in your shoes, right? Like nobody knows until they're in that position. Like, okay, what am I going to do? Um, yeah. I want to be finished with this degree so that I can move on to the next stage of life and yeah. have a career. And so it's like, you know, people, people gamble on stuff all the time, every day. Right, right, right. And mm-hmm. like, was that a gamble? <laughs> it's exactly what it was. It's it's gamble, exactly right? what it was. Uh, right. So um, yeah, and uh, it's one of those things. If yeah. you had if you had done the exact same thing, like I don't know, a thousand miles west in California, like you said, slap on the wrist, probably nothing. But right. um, but we were in Texas. Yeah. So so, long story short, you face the consequences you went to went to prison for what'd you say 72 months yep 72 months i uh i did almost five years on it total Mm -hmm. because it's federal and it's it's not like a half time or or quarter time like state jail it's you're doing most of all of the time yeah yeah so it's so what was that like um it was uh it was it was actually i there's no other way for me to put it except for, for that it it end up being good like it's it's hard to even think about it like that but it's just like that pruning process that god puts you through sometimes is so good for you that it's ridiculous how much clarity you get hmm. in you know awareness of the people around you and your own situation when you're not like submerged in not not worldliness but like in what you want from like you are wanting something from people and they're getting something from you but when you aren't there to give them something and you see them all leave then you feel like you're not even getting what you were wanting either you know what mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. so it, I mean, that process for people, I mean, it's good. To, I, that is how it happened for me, but, and there's probably no other way that it could have happened. And that's the only reason why I'm saying it's good, because I, I definitely didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's this, there's this dude, uh, Jordan Peterson, mm-hmm. and he, he talks a little bit about how um, in order to like find out who we really are, we have to like burn off all the parts that that we've like fabricated that like you know these facades that we put up and and when you're burning that part off or you're cutting that part off like it hurts like it is it's there's no other way to put it like it's not it's not an easy task it's a struggle right. and it's um but it's necessary so do you feel like that was kind of like this stage where you were kind of pushing everything off until you got down to like your core, like your true essence. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you don't have any support from, from anything, any crutches, any, Mm -hmm. anything that you can cling on to for affirmation or anything like that, when it's just you, you know what I mean? Like, what what do you care about, and and who's important? What's important, hmm. and who's there? Yeah. I mean, you are even one of the only people that came to see me when I was in prison. Like, that's it tells you something about the people that are in your circle right there. Like, you know, people were all across the country, and there was only a few that came to 
to see me, but they were coming from L.A. You came to see me from far away, but, like, the ones that were close, right, in Waco and Dallas and everything, it was like, you know what I mean? Like, and family included. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's everything. Every, I mean. Yeah. So Shoot. it's necessary, and it helps you see who you really are, too, what, you, what really uh, provokes you and makes you feel good. Mm hmm. So coming out of that, like what what plans did you have or what was your uh, what were your intentions uh, when you got out? Like what what were you going to do with with, you know, with the rest of your life? Like what was the plan? I already had the plan. I was I was already running mm -hmm. <laughs> and was just waiting for my feet to actually touch the ground so I could take <laughs> So. I already had um, my my certification um, ready to to take the test um, when I got out and when I was in the halfway house. Uh, I had already contacted uh, uh, Kelvin Robinson because I heard that he had a new spot, a, a gym of his own now that he was uh, just like personal trainers, and I was uh, I have been calling him. A year and a half before I even got out and <laughs> told him, hey, when I get out, please let me come there and train there and I will pay you. I'll get you the money. And he told me that he would for sure. So, I mean, I already had that in line and ready to go. The only problem was is the halfway house. They they don't let you work like under contract type conditions. Like you have to be mm -hmm. at an hourly job. So they made me wait and I had to work at Toyota for like nine months. And then after that, I got off of a, out of the halfway house and got to go on house arrest. And then I could train at the gym. So I went straight over there to him. Uh, first month, he only charged me 300 bucks, you know, uh, for the lease or more, uh, the rent. Like rent. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I had, that was, that was just one of my clients right there. I just said, yeah. let me get another one. Let me yeah. just find one more person. Yeah. But it happened fast, man. And after that, I, I contacted. What happened was, I don't know if you remember Lori McReynolds. Uh, uh, anyways, I contacted her. I used to train her at Gold's. And uh, I was like, hey, I'm back in town. Like, people that I know knew my character and mm -hmm. still like me, even though that happened. You know what I mean? Yep. So I contacted them and said, hey, I'm training again if you want to come, you know. Uh, I'll hook you up a little, uh, um, at first if you want, um, just to get back in and, and tell Leslie, everybody else that we used to train. Mm -hmm. Started off just like that with like wow. three clients. Man, guess what happened the first the first month I got back? Lori McReynolds, that client, goes to Florida <laughs> uh, for uh, a vacation and as the trainer on the trip with all her and all of her homegirls. So, like, she pays for a trip for me to go and everything. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm at, and I really didn't even have to train because they woke up in the morning and they were still drunk. And, like, I would tell them to go. <laughs> I would tell them to go train and all the workout and everything. So I really just got a free vacation after I got out of prison to, awesome. to, to Destin, Florida. <laughs> That's a good deal, man. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's cool. So, so, so all these people that you were training before, like they, like you said, they knew your character. They knew who you really were. And yeah, only two of them came back though. Gotcha. But still. <laughs> yeah. That's legit. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. A lot of them have moved on. Bunch of chicks. Are <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> the people's lives were different, man. It was like, yeah. it's five years later. A lot of people are in different places. For sure. For sure. Yeah. What was crazy is, uh, like, in that time, I had moved from Waco to Indianapolis. Yep. And then I was living up there for a while and then moved back to Dallas. And then, yeah, I'm still in Dallas now. But it is crazy. Like, people, people's lives change. Yeah. You know my sister lives there now, right? In Dallas? No. Westfield, Indiana. Oh, no way. Yes, crazy. that's what she looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> way up there. 
Dude, it's too cold up there, man. Yeah. I don't have time for that cold weather anymore. Oh, she's just up there for the good school system now with the kids. Mm. Yeah. It is 80 degrees here yesterday. That's pretty good. It's January. I it was snowing the other day. It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew it. I thought it was just snowing. No, it was snowing the other day. And then, dude, in the, in the span of a week, it went from like 75 to like a couple days later it was snowing. Oh, also, in between there, there was also a uh, a tornado warning. <laughs> Can't forget that. It's like tornado warning, and then the next day it was snowing, and then a couple days later it's back to 80, 80 degrees. It's the middle of January. Like, thank you, Texas. Yeah. So, it's good stuff. So, um, so, yeah, dude, thank you for sharing, like, that part of, you know, that part of your life. Like, that's um, – I love like the, the like redemption story of it. Like it's really inspiring to me that like, um, you know, like everybody makes mistakes, like everybody, there's not a single person, you know, living right now who hasn't made a mistake. Um, but those mistakes don't have to define us and they don't have to, you know, be the only thing about us. Like we have the opportunities to, um, to overcome a lot of that and, uh, just seeing how you've, you know, started your own business and have, you know, like you've owned the past, but you aren't the past and, you know, you've moved on and you're successful now and, um, you're impacting tons of people's lives and you're getting people healthy. And, um, I love that. So, um, I'm happy to see you succeeding, man. So appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. So hey, man, you were there at the airport for me too when I uh when I got out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I brought you, you some there. steak from Eatsy's. You brought me some some steak. You brought me food from everywhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> you had, you had like, eggs in there. You had everything in there. Yeah. I was like, what would I want to eat right now if I had just been in prison? <laughs> everything. Everything. So I got, <laughs> <laughs> And I did. I was so funny. I was like, man, this does not even go together. <laughs> a little bit of everything, man. So so that's the perfect segue. Okay. So uh, the main reason I wanted to talk to you on today's episode is to talk a lot about dietary experimentation. Because out of like all the people in this industry that I know, um, you've probably done the most – like legitimate dietary experimentation uh, of really like anybody I know. So um, like when we met, I think you were doing more of just the, you know, traditional bodybuilding type diet. Um, and then. Uh, and I say that that's the biggest that I've so so that we know that's what my body type was. That's the biggest that I've ever been was when I was eating like that. Yeah. Yeah. And like you did. You did some shows, right? You did some bodybuilding shows, so like you were, you were working it. Yeah, at, at, I found that there was no glory in them real quick, so I was like, <laughs> only actually did one, because <laughs> I was like, oh no, because on the Wednesday, I mean, I looked so good on Wednesday, I was like, this is ridiculous. I better do good, and then on Friday, two days, I mean, it was ridiculous the difference that my body looked, and I was like, man. And this is crazy, you know, how you can lose it in, in that fast and your body changed that much. And I was like, no, nope, no, nope. I drank like four ounces of water and messed up the whole week. <laughs> I'm serious. I was like, like that's no, nah, I, I can't do that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> things shouldn't have to be that extreme. Yeah. Yeah. That's too much work. <laughs> and like when you're and diving got, down that low, no, you, oh, your mood's just, like, all over the place. And everybody's Can't always even like, smile. I, want pro card. I want my pro card. Not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> That's what, I'm like, it, it depends on what you get glory from and what, what do you want. Because I found out real fast there is no glory in it to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear that. So, um, so I know for, for quite a while you were doing, like, keto and yep. and now you're doing more uh plant-based so tell us a little bit about um 
keto, what got you into that? What are some of the things you learned from that? And uh, um, yeah, let's talk about that first. Well, I want to clear up that it is the the real keto that I was doing, not the old school, you know, uh, eat burgers and, and, and bacon all day long. <laughs> Just all the, all the meat that you want and nothing else. Not that keto. Yeah. It was and you know, high, high fat, just a little bit of meat and a lot, a lot of veggies. So, mm -hmm. um, and I did have really, really good results from that. I already knew that I would though, because my body responds really good to low carb, just hands down. That's just what it, it responds fast. Mm -hmm. Um, so I already knew that I was going to do good because even when I did the bodybuilding shows when I was eating like, you know, high carbs, rice and chicken, all that. Um, when it got close to the show time, about two to three weeks out, I was doing basically keto. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when I got shredded. That's what I'm saying. Like that's, I knew that that style worked for my body type. Mm -hmm. So, so the high fat, the high healthy fat, you know, um, high veggie, um, a moderate protein diet works great for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I learned that then and it's it just followed with that now but um and then well recently i started getting more into like why am i getting bloated so much you know i wasn't worried about that back then i was just worried about being big mm -hmm. so now there's a difference because now i hate the way i'm the, that bloated feeling i didn't even know that i was bloated back then so I bet that's a, the case a lot of the times when people are, are sensitive to or have food sensitivities and, and things like that, because I feel like I've been like that the whole time and I just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> like thinking, oh, man, there's no way I got this fat that fast. No, I was just super bloated. Mm, just inflamed. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Bad. All the time. People, yeah. And and I know that people are like that now, walking around super inflamed, and they don't even know what it feels like to feel good. Mm -hmm. So they don't even know that they hurting. <laughs> yeah, it's it, that is that's the truth, man. Like, there's definitely some some solid evidence to support that. Like, you don't know how good you'll feel until you're healthy. Like, so, yeah. um, so. And I have the money to do the panels i was gonna try to get the blood panels done to see uh -huh. ev everything that i was allergic to or sensitive mm -hmm. didn't do it I, I just started taking it out of the diet checking it mm -hmm. and it worked gotcha so did you transition directly from keto into plant-based or was it yep. kind of a was it a pretty yep. quick transition yep yeah pretty quick um because i um i tried it out um oh I'm, my energy level is like i lost you for a second there can you repeat that i said uh so i tried it out for uh for three days mm -hmm. and man my energy level it was ridiculous i was um uh, I felt like I was on a fat burner or, or like like legit one, one that had <laughs> almost borderline. So I was like, man, this is ridiculous. And then on the fourth day, I went with my girlfriend and ate some meat <laughs> at, at, at her grandparents' house, right? Uh -huh. I got sleepy immediately, like, like <laughs> immediately <laughs> needed a nap right then and there, like, right then. <laughs> and, and I was like, Oh, I can't do it. That's crazy. Like the difference right there in lethargic and, mm. and like, I can't fight it. Like, don't feel like I wasn't exaggerating like that. It was crazy. So I was like, okay, I'll do it again. And then just back and back and forth, do it again. Take the meat out again for another seven days. Like it just feels too good, man. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, but 
then again, there of course there's always you know all or nothing approach to everything with everybody. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way, you know what I mean? Like, because if you just cutting out a large percentage, like or you know basically like keto or any other macro breakdown, all you got to do is get that percentage down to where it's good for your type, your body, and and go from there. Mm-hmm. The right types of foods and. I mean, you should get all the amino uh, acid profiles if you're eating a variety of everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that, uh, like, to, to hear other people say that specifically, like, I, I don't take their words with that much weight. But because you've done so much experimentation, like, I know you're not just saying it, you know? Like, I know that you're... Like, like hey... You don't understand, Kevin. You already know. Like, I love meat. I used to go to Chipotle. I used to kill those bowls and get extra this, extra what. Like, yeah. uh, you know. Also, like, I'm hyper aware of what's going on in my body, and and that being aware of what that was doing to me, like, that's it's too good to be true, man. You gotta you gotta act on it. Like, if if I'm doing, if I feel this good without it, you know what I mean? And you can tell your body is, is uh, like, cause you're so inflamed, everything joints, everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> elbow pain, plantar fasciitis, all of it. Gone. <laughs> all of it. Gone. So like all that inflammation and I'm thinking, oh, okay, it might just be the beef. And no, I love cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I love cheese. Man, I'm telling you. I was like, nope, it ain't going to be cheese. It ain't going to be cheese. Pull the cheese out. It's the cheese, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I, that's the, I was more mad about that than the meat. I promise. Yeah. I still am. I yeah. love cheese. Yeah, I can't give cheese up. I can't do it. Hey, like, I'm telling you, man. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, but... If you're not sensitive to lactose, and, and you know, um, I mean, it's really the casein and everything in it that's that's rough. So, uh, mm-hmm. if you're not, you know, sensitive to lactose or anything like that, you won't have a problem with it. But I thought I wasn't. I most definitely am sensitive to dairy, and I didn't yeah. think I was because mm-hmm. I didn't know what inflamed felt like. Yeah, yeah, because you hadn't taken it out yet to see how you felt. Right, right, dude. That's I cannot stress enough to anybody who's watching or listening. Take chunks of time to experiment with your diet. That and that doesn't mean like be willy nilly. Like okay, so uh, right now Joe Rogan is doing a month long carnivore diet just to see how it affects him. And he has everybody in the country following him and doing it too. What's crazy? Like <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are. Doing- <laughs> yes. It's like it's it's a uh, National Carnivore Diet Month. I know, so I know. It's crazy, right? Like I I think that's pretty extreme. I have no interest in doing that. Um, but he's like, <laughs> yeah, like he's saying. Aside from the horrific, like like horror movie diarrhea, he feels fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That, uh, I mean, really, I feel like he shouldn't have diarrhea. I feel like <laughs> he should be super, super stopped up. That's crazy. So, but he, uh, he just wants to know what it's all about. So it, for him, it's just, yeah, that's, that's good for him because they're usually, they're usually on it over there at on it. Yeah. On that, on that research over there, they're pretty good. So, I mean, let him have his fun with that diet. But, I mean, he's a smart guy. Yeah. And that's <laughs> he the knows. Thing. He, uh, he's, he's talked and consulted with a lot of, of doctors, physicians, like PhDs and MDs, um, and people who are, like, supporters of this who are extremely well-educated. And he's, like, trying to learn as much as he can. And then he's like, all right, well, in order to see if these claims about it are true, I need to try it. And so that, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like taking chunks of time to try 
different types of diets just to see how they how they affect you because you don't know. Well, like, see, I mean, but see, with some people, and I'll just say on on this that that would work for some people because it would work for me too if I did the carnivore diet. Of course, it would look like I'm getting lean because I would. I would get lean on that diet because that's what I was doing when I was bodybuilding. I was just eating steak all day long. Steak, 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 and maybe a salad here or there. But, mm -hmm. like, and I got super ripped, but that's because it's the high-fat protein, technically kind of keto thing again. High-fat, yeah. low-carb. That's what it is. It's the low-carb that is doing it in the high-fat. It's not really, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to lose fat. It's going to work. Like, yeah, but, it, but, it, but what, what, what cost? How long do you want to do it? Exactly. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to have to wear an adult diaper because... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, that doesn't appeal to me. But, like, yeah, if you're only eating meat, how are you going to be at calorie maintenance or a calorie surplus? Like, by definition, you will be in a calorie deficit. You're not going to be eating enough calories to right. maintain your weight or gain weight. Like, it's just too difficult. Nobody can eat that much meat. Right. So. Because yeah. they're going to be sleepy and inflamed. <laughs> <laughs> they just might. They just might. But you know what? If they're like, uh, you know, from like northern Alaska, yeah, or like, uh, you know, these there's there's certain there's these little pockets of of peoples and cultures who like that's the way they eat and that's how they've always eaten. You know what? And if you gave them a bunch of veggies, their body would be like, no, I don't know about this. Exactly. That's what it is. Their bodies have adapted. You know, yes. I mean, yeah. they, I mean, they might secrete a little bit more. I mean, uh, gallbladder. I mean, you don't you don't know. Like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like they, because people adapt from like out of nowhere. Yep, it's Just true. From, from put, you can put them anywhere and they're going to their body is going to try to adapt. Yeah. Maybe the first couple generations that live there. They weren't that healthy, but then something in the DNA clicks. Like right. you, you expose the body to a specific type of stressor over and over and over again. And maybe the adaptation doesn't take place in this generation or the next right. generation, but maybe in the next one. It will boom, happen. It will clicks. happen. Yeah. So like that was one of the interesting things. Um, like I love history. Uh, so learning a little bit about how uh, – uh, Genghis Khan was able to like invade and take over China. Like uh, everyone in in like part of the the Mongolian camp, they were not lactose intolerant, and so they could ride into battle. And I think they would mostly have female horses, so that they could milk them, and then that was a huge portion of their diet. So they'd ride into battle. Not like literally ride into battle, but um, right. they they could they had a high protein, high fat diet that they could bring with them, and they were fighting these armies that were almost exclusively on a very low protein, very uh, nutrient sparse like rice diet or grain diet, and it was just like yeah, like you've got these like muscled up jack dudes who all they do is wrestle. Yeah, <laughs> and they're gonna fight these people who are like hun hunched over Drink in a rice field. All day. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, but it and what's interesting is uh, Genghis Khan and the Mongols uh, were very efficient at um, how do I say this in a somewhat politically correct way. Uh, like one in five people in the world right now uh, has a genetic ancestor who's Genghis Khan. So, and it's those people who aren't lactose intolerant. So like super interesting that even now there's a huge portion of the, of the planet that can't drink milk, but there's also a decent amount who, who can. So like you said, like for you, you didn't think that – Cheese is going to be a problem, but boom, it was. 
<laughs> I'm too I, skinny. I didn't even feel bad off of milk, though. I mean, whole milk I would, but mm. like 2% skim milk like that, I didn't feel that bad. But now that I drink almond milk, I see. <laughs> I see that there is a difference. I didn't just feel it. <laughs> it's a real thing. Yeah. It's no joke. It's so what? Crazy. I mean, I guess, I mean, you just weren't meant to do that, to, to drink from it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are just, it does not, it does not work yeah. with their physiology and their biochemistry. It's like, nope, it's not going to happen. So what are, what, what do you recommend to people who are interested in trying out a plant-based diet? How do you, how do you initiate that? How do you get that started? Cause like for Cause most nobody, people, cause nobody's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I don't know. They might, they might try it. So I've, I've got a, a decent amount of clients that I work with who are plant-based. Like a lot of these triathletes, they're all on a, on a triathlon team or a club and the club is almost exclusively plant-based athletes. So why do you think that? Why do I think that? Yeah. I don't know. I, there's plenty of, of clients that I have who don't eat a plant-based diet. Well, I mean, what is plant-based? Like, is plant-based a majority of your calories coming from from plant food? Is that the definition? Well, I think it's just no, <laughs> yeah, no meat. <laughs> all <laughs> all no natural meat. foods like, that are no meat, dairy, but uh, you're, like, I'm just saying, like, those triathletes, like, I'm talking about energy-wise. Oh, they need those carbs, man. Energy-wise, yeah, that's. I mean, I'm. I'm telling you, I. I feel like it would slow down somebody that's even up there, a triathlete like the up there. I mean, if they were just eating pounding meat, I'd still feel like they would be putting, getting behind and slower. Dude, a little. It's crazy, man. So the there's this dude who just broke earlier well last year probably june or july of last year he broke two world records the same day the 100 mile world record and the 24 hour world record and his diet is almost exclusively ribeyes well it, i mean <laughs> is his body fat super low <laughs> i think it is well i mean he averaged Six minutes and 48 seconds per mile for 24 hours. Bro, I mean, that might be genetics alone. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. He's the exception. Like, he's, he is not the norm by any, by any stretch of the imagination. He's not normal. And, and, and we all know that, like, you know, it's technically calories in versus calories out. But... If you're and if your body can handle this without being inflamed, then more power to you. Because yeah. I mean, maybe you have awesome genetics where your family has adapted. You know what I mean? Yep. Then, then you're then you're good. That's yeah. that's all it boils down to, really. Because there's no one size fits all. Because I mean, it, you're definitely gonna have to check your body type. You might be allergic to chicken. Like this, yeah. all kind of stuff is easy. Yeah, dude. That's that's the thing, man. Uh, I love and appreciate that you said that. Like it it. it does come down to calories in calories out like you can't you can't swipe aside thermodynamics like yes, the, math, exactly. the math and the physics it, it, you can't the biophysics it's there but everybody's biochemistry is slightly different it's unique and you've got to figure out what works best for you you have to you've got to take the time to figure it out so and like I don't think there's a single person. I don't. Well, I better. <laughs> I better watch how I say it. I don't think there's very many people on planet Earth who wouldn't benefit from more all natural right. Right. Okay. fruits so, and so veggies. I won't even do that. To you. I won't even do that to you because you don't even have to tell people that they have to stop eating meat because that would be the end of everything because <laughs> i mean technically we didn't all they would have to do is just like you said like eat way more plant-based a lot more just uh, make an attempt to so they can feel that yeah being full first off being full i mean 
a carnivore diet that you should technically be able to eat forever, but you can't. How come? Like, your stomach's not full of the meat. <laughs> but, uh, like, anybody should be able to, to, to feel the difference with more plants because mm. of that energy. Yeah. That energy. And if they cut it out, I'm sure they'll feel it. They will feel it. Just three days to a week, period. So give it a try, right? Just, yeah. Test or it cycle out. on, whatever. Yeah, see how you feel. Yeah. I would, um, I don't, I don't like the one size fits all method. So, it, I mean, whatever you got to do to be successful, because some people can't take it out. Like, I thought I yeah. wasn't going to be able to take that cheese out. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a bean burrito with cheese on it. And then I had to take the cheese off the bean burrito. I was mm. mad. <laughs> now it's just a bean burrito. Yeah. Shoot. So no I'll steak, do- no cheese. <sighs> hey man, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that I can't. I'm not saying that I can't, but I really but I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So so if I go somewhere and and I really, really want it. I could if I want to feel horrible all night and sleepy and go to bed and not be able to watch a movie when I get home, <laughs> then I'll go ahead and figure it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, and you know, if it's not more than five percent of your diet, anyways, I mean, it's not going to affect you like that. There's no way, unless yeah. your arteries are already clogged up. <laughs> Well, for a few people, uh, that's the case right now. It's clogged up already. Yeah, if you're yeah. eating plant based, that's it's impossible. So, <laughs> clean those pipes out. Yeah, a- unless it's genetic. A lot of people are screwed yeah. genetically. That's true. That's true. That's for sure, dude. So, let's uh, let's transition away from that a little bit. You know what? Bottom line, bullet points. Everybody needs to experiment with their diet. Everybody should eat more fruits and veggies. Do you have anything to add to that? Nope, sounds good. (laughs) (laughs) That's got the Lavelle stamp of approval? Yeah, I'm not going to go ahead and put myself out there and say stay away from the meat or the cheese. Just just check your body to see what you're sensitive to. It'll surprise you. Mm. What, What? what your body is uh, not wanting that you think it does want. Mm. There's some truth to that. So, um, man, we've been going about 50 minutes. So let's uh, let's jump into some other stuff. What are you uh, What are you reading right now? What are you listening to right now? What are you learning? Man, I don't know. What am I? What was the last thing that I read? Doesn't have to be nutrition or training related. It could be whatever. That was random. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that. <laughs> we'll come back to it. I don't know. We'll, we'll save it for later. So, uh, everybody who wants to follow you on Instagram... How do they do that? Um, well, my handle is lovetraining.me. Um, it is, I post some funny content on there. I haven't posted in a while, but um, a lot of, uh, I had a lot of keto, like, you know, healthy snacks and stuff on there that were really easy to make, pancakes and stuff like that, mm-hmm. breakfast, um, a lot of easy desserts. Um but post things like that really just convenient snacks and uh uh workouts funny content all kind of content so it's all over the place yeah but a good one to follow for sure i recommend everybody go follow him right now don't waste time you'll regret it (laughs) (laughs) all right so if you could give everybody watching or listening one piece of advice what would it be? Follow me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, that's good advice. Hey, you know what? Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> better call me and give me a cut for that statement. 
He's the one emailing me about my Instagram account. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, what would I say? Um, well, there's only one thing to say is put God first. Mm. I put God first because I mean, you you don't you really don't know where you're going. Unless you have a relationship with God, you're just walking around and spinning around in a circle trying to, I mean, get somewhere. You don't even know where you're going, but you want to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. So you won't even know your talents and, and how you're supposed to use them until you really have that or establish that relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and one way or another, sometimes he'll force you to get to that place. Yeah, sometimes he'll take you to places you don't want to be. Yep. But you need to go there. Yeah, the pruning process. That's right. That's right. Sweet. All right, man. Well, dude, I can't wait to have you on again in the future because this was so much fun. It was yep. always, well, always a good time talking with you. Way easier than I thought. You remember I told you I was a little nervous? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. We're just hanging out. Yep. Talking like in the good your, old days. In your office. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Just like we're at uh, at Fuji in Waco. Oh, speaking of that, I was going to say uh, Genghis Grill. Have you eaten mm -hmm. there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love I get, Genghis Grill. I fill the plate. Sorry, the bowl. Guess what I fill it with? Guess. Hold on. All the meat. <laughs> <laughs> I did, too. When I was going there, before they went out of uh, business, mm. they, went out of, they went out of business here in Waco. So, uh, but I was, hey, I didn't, I filled up the bowl, and then on top of that, you put it in the tray, it would spill over, and I filled up the tray, too. So I had, I had eggs and, and cabbage and everything overflowing. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You gotta. Oh, come, come to think of it, I think it might be better now if I went. <laughs> <laughs> you fill that thing with veggies. Yeah. Why not? Are you gonna start a garden? Are you gonna start growing things? Hey, you man, Kevin. <laughs> I already did that this past <laughs> this past year. I had I had a bunch of jalapenos. I had mm. um, I had, had bell peppers. I had okra. I had tomatoes. The the okra was growing the fastest. I was getting like eight a day. Wow. <laughs> I had two <laughs> plants that were super tall. I had some nacho uh, um, jalapenos that were going super fast. Then some, um, and the bell peppers were slow. Tomatoes were slow. I only got like a total of three tomatoes the whole season. Wow. But they was good though. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I was growing like natural plants and foods, and wow. it wasn't marijuana. <laughs> comes full circle man that's good yeah. see that's, good. that's the way it should be yeah make me feel nice and relaxed <laughs> plenty of energy yep i appreciate that man. that's awesome well next time you grow some jalapenos i'll uh i'll take some off your hands okay cool definitely and then i have a bunch of them. i'll, I'll wrap some, some bacon around them <laughs> That's fine with me. Good. As long as it's tofu, or, uh, tofu bacon. No, nah, and I'm going to fill them with cream cheese, too. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> I'll probably eat them with you. I don't know. Yeah, why not? Why not? Hey, if we go out to eat, man, we need to do something. For Whatever. sure. I come to Dallas, actually. I've been coming a little more, so uh, we should get together. We should. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. So. Yep. All right, man. Well, this was so good. Uh, I really appreciate you, your uh, your time and sharing your story and uh, a little wisdom and a little a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. So, we'll uh, we'll get you back on again in the uh, in the future. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate awesome. the opportunity. For sure. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Adios.